Hello everybody, today we'll be doing a shoe restoration on this pair of very, very nice to boot New York Adam Derrick double monk straps. Now the main thing we'll be focusing on here is this ink stain. If you can see that, that's a pretty nasty looking ink stain. So we are going to try to get that out and uh, restore this thing back to its original glory. So we also do have a very significant water stain here. All right, so the very first step you're gonna do is you're gonna treat both of these with a very generous application of saddle soap. I use Phoebing's saddle soap, and the point of saddle soap is to essentially strip off all the color and all the wax that's built up over the years, and hopefully stripping away the uh, ink stains and water stains. And then this is essentially the idea behind saddle soap is it restores the leather back to its original shape in condition so then you can do whatever you want to it so uh what you got to do is you got to take your applicator brush i have a kiwi brush here fill your cap with water kind of dip it in there and then get a real nice application of saddle soap on your brush like so once you do that just go at the shoe and you really want to get this all the way in there you're trying to really strip away the uh, outer coating essentially of this these shoes and this may require more than one application um, but you know the more you do the better especially when you're dealing with shoes as you know jacked up as this so what you have to do is you apply the saddle soap and make sure to Wait for it to dry before buffing it off, and then if you need to, do another coating and another coating, and just rinse and repeat. Make sure to pay special attention to the spots with stains, like that right there, and just really go as hard as you can. Well, not too hard, but the idea is to really try to apply it very well to the, especially to the stained areas. The other areas, you can just give a kind of general application, but. For the stained areas, you really want to focus, especially on those. So once you're done with your application of saddle soap and it's had uh, some time to dry, take your cotton cloth, make sure it's cotton or microfiber. Uh, I got a pack of four of these red washed cloths at Target for 90, sorry, at Walmart for 97 cents. So these are pretty good. Just take it, kind of fold it over, and then you just kind of go ahead and start buffing your shoe. I kind of like that. Now, as you can see, the shoes are a bit darker now, and that's because when you use saddle soap, the water that you use to apply it with does actually darken the leather. Um, and as you can see, the ink stains have disappeared somewhat, but still pretty severe, especially here. And there's only so much you can do with the saddle soap. If the stain is really deep, then there's not you really can't remove it. So then the only thing you can do at this point is attempt to essentially change the color of the shoe darker to that shade or darker. And you're basically gonna have to dye the shoe with a variety of polishes. And I'll show you how to do that. But first, before we go to that uh, portion of the restoration, we're going to apply a really nice layer of leather conditioner. Now I use Saphir Renovateur. This is a real good stuff. It's fairly expensive, but it's excellent. You always want to apply this after the uh, saddle soap because saddle soap strips off everything. This stuff conditions the leather, makes it supple, and uh, basically protects it from, from the future. And you always want to apply this after saddle soap. So you just take your cloth. I have a sock here, but whatever. Take one of your cloths and just apply it all over the shoe. And you want to wait for this, wait for this to dry before buffing it off. So, you just take your cloth, dip it in there, and apply it as you would a normal polish with light circular motions. And you want to cover the entire shoe with this stuff because this stuff is really good. And you want to wait for it to dry so that can really sink in. And it's always good to put at least one application, if not two, because you really cannot overdo leather conditioner. And this stuff is critical to 
the preservation of the leather in the shoe. So after you have applied the leather conditioner and let it dry, you really don't need to buff it, but it's a good idea to basically, you want to smooth it out for the next application of cream polish. So take your cloth and very gently, lightly kind of buff it away. And this will start to develop a shine as you can, you can probably tell. And it's a lot more shiny than the uh, saddle soap could provide. So this is really good. But we're not done yet, so make sure not to spend too much time on this buffing part because there are still a couple of other steps. So a quick comparison of the shine that you get from buffing, lightly buffing the leather conditioner is right there. And that shows just how effective this stuff is in filling in the micro wrinkles and really nourishing the leather. So we will now go to the next part, which involves a cream polish. So this is a fairly dark leather at this point, but and we generally want to have at least several different um, levels of brown because not everything is the same shade. Unfortunately, I only have two shades. I have light brown and I have dark brown. So we're going to start with the dark brown because this is very dark. Um, just to show you what the light brown looks like. It's, it looks pretty dark, but it comes on pretty darn light and that's not going to be good enough for this. Dark brown is good for our application, especially since we're trying to cover up the dark stains here. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some of this dark brown cream polish. And the way you do that is by taking another cloth or a sock. Make sure you have one specific cloth or sock for each color. You don't want to mix the colors. And it's pretty simple here. You just apply it as you would the conditioner. And it's always good to test it in an inconspicuous area first. So take a little dip of it and then just kind of put it, you know, in the back somewhere. See how the color works out. So we're seeing that, you know, it's, it's reasonable. It's a little dark, but that should be all right. So from here on, you just apply a bunch of this polish all over the shoe. So like before, you want to let the cream polish set for some time. Um, dry and the reason you do this is because the longer it stays on there the more effective it is it really seeps into the pores and uh, uh, you know has a greater effect so you want to leave it on for a little bit and after it's generally dry you can start buffing it off is you usually don't want to be too meticulous here because there still is at least one more application of stuff so just kind of do a general kind of cursory buffing on this thing and you'll see that it's starting to get really nice and shiny too. So after a nice buffing, uh, you see the shoes are nice and shiny and the major stain that we saw before is a little less, it's a little less visible. It's still there, but the old phrase, if you can't beat them, join them, really applies here. We couldn't beat the stain, so we just attempted to join it with some darker polish. Now we're not done yet because we still have to apply some wax polish. Now. I have four different types of brown polish. It goes from light brown, brown, dark brown, and brown. These three all kind of look the same, but they are different colors. Whereas that one's a definite brown. Um, I prefer Lincoln Stain Wax due to the... Um, it really generally gives a better shine than Kiwi or Allen Edmonds. But this is always good for... This is actually more of a light brown. Um, it says brown, but the color is more similar to that one. So... Which one are we going to use? Well, we know we're not going to use the uh, light brown, so we're going to kill this one. Probably not going to use the uh, Allen Edmonds because that's pretty light as well. We're going to kill that one. So it comes down to brown or dark brown. Now, at this point, you take yourself another sock or cloth, and then it's hard to tell because these look very similar in color right off, right out the can. So. Take a, start with the light, always start with the lighter ones. Here's the key. If you start with dark, it's hard to get to light. But if you start from light, it's very easy to make it darker. So if you don't know which one to use, always start with the lightest one. And then you can easily cover it up with the dark one. So you want to have some water in your uh, can and dip your polishing cloth in the water to make it a little bit moist. And then apply some of this polish onto the cloth and then Test it out in a relatively inconspicuous area to see if it's the right color you want. So let's put it right around 
there. That's a decent area. So you apply a little bit and see the color. You know, so far it looks all right. So why don't we do a little bit of dark and see how that turns out. And make sure to just do a little bit of dark because it's hard to reverse. So put it right there. And I'm seeing that dark might be the way to go, but I think it's a little bit too dark. So let's stick with the light, sorry, stick with regular brown for now, and then we can move up from there if needed. So, like I said, um, apply and moisten your cloth, apply polish, and go in a circular motion all across the shoe until you're done, paying special attention to the areas of the stains such as there because that's what you really need to cover and blend. So if you can accomplish that, you're doing well. All right, so you've applied one layer of wax polish, a uh, dark brown color at this point. And what you gotta do now is, I always find it good to apply two coats of wax. So with the first coat, we're not gonna buff it, we're gonna use a brush. Here I've got an Alan Edmonds horsehair brush. Horsehair is important because it's it's finer than bore, for example, and it's softer and it doesn't damage the leather. And doing this step is important because although you have gone all over the shoe in a circular motion, this really helps redistribute it very nice and evenly into all the little nooks and crannies that you may have missed. So take your shoe and kind of gently just go over it with the brush. Immediately you see a shine. This shine will get better if you do a real buffing but this right here is just to redistribute the wax. And you will be applying another layer of wax after this. So this step, you don't wanna to be too meticulous, but it is important to really even out the layer. All right, so you've used your horsehair brush and gone over it pretty well. As you can see, it's very nice and shiny, but if you can tell, the stain is still pretty uh, evident. Doesn't look too nice. So at this point, I think it's safe to say that, you know, with the stain that's still pretty obvious, we're gonna have to move to the dark brown. And that's why I started with the light brown, or the regular brown, is because it's easy to move up a level, but it's very difficult to take off a level. So we're gonna do the same process, this time with the dark brown. And since it ran out of cloths, so I'll just use a different area of the same cloth that I used. Make sure to you know remember which is which so you don't mix your colors. But same sort of thing, you moisten your cloth, you apply some of that polish, and in a circular motion, I'm gonna go over the entire shoe because if you're going to shade darker, unless you're just accentuating the tip, you're gonna to wanna to do the entire shoe, otherwise it's gonna be very obvious that you darkened the color. So just go start from the front or whatever and just do the entire shoe. This should make the whole leather, you know, maybe a half shade darker to better blend in with that stain because I don't know if we're gonna be able to remove that stain, but we can probably blend it and sort of cover it and make it less noticeable when you're walking around. All right, so now you've applied a nice thick coat of that dark brown polish and uh, if you look at this, you can still, the stain is still semi-visible, but that's because we haven't used the horsehair brush yet. Now, there's two options here. You can either do the actual buffing or the horsehair. I would try to do the horsehair first because this is really helpful it's for really just redistributing it because buffing isn't as even as a bunch of, you know, horsehairs are. So as before, just, you know, sort of uh, just gently, maybe not gently, but carefully brush the entire shoe like that. So after you apply your horsehair brush, you do have the option to further buff it with your cloth. Um, that should make it somewhat shinier. But, you know, are you really looking for a mirror shine here? Some people do, and that's, you know, I'm all for that, but for more practical uses, you don't really need a mirror shine, you just need a shine. So we're gonna shine these up and uh, with a general shine with the buffing cloth and let's see what they look like afterwards. So here's a quick comparison between using a buffing cloth and the horsehair brush. On the right we've used the brush and a cloth and on the left we just used the brush. Might be hard to tell but in person the one on the right is definitely shinier 
So using a buffing cloth is helpful for making it the ultimate shine. Um, if you really want to mirror shine it, you could use a buffing wheel. I don't, I just go by hand because that's more, you know, traditional. But, you know, this is pretty much a level of shine that's maximum for daily use. Unless you're, you know, you're trying to go for a patent leather look for some black tie tuxedo event. You don't need to go any more than this, you know, like you can almost see a reflection in it. You really don't need to get that shiny. So let's do the other one and see how it looks at the end. All right, we're now completely done with our restoration. Um, just as a bit of a comparison, let's see what the leather looked like before we did our treatment. Um, I did not do the tongue of this shoe, um, just so I could show you how it looked like before. So, let me get this open. It's right there. That is the color it was before we did our treatment. And as you can tell, it's almost a full shade darker. And this was necessary because of that huge nasty stain, that, which was so much darker than the rest of it. As you can tell, we were not able to successfully remove the entire stain, but it's a lot better than before. Imagine that dark stain on that light leather. That looked pretty bad. These days, unless you're looking really closely, it's really going to be difficult to see that stain. And this is a pretty savage stain. It has even eaten away into the leather a little bit, so this is about as good as you can get it, honestly. But from a distance, nobody's going to be able to tell the difference unless they're really looking closely. And if they were looking closely, they'd see that you spent time and effort and a lot of elbow grease in restoring these shoes. You know, fancy... Maybe not fancy, but fine leather shoe connoisseurs, they don't care so much about, you know, nitty gritty details like that. They care that you spent the time to do it because as connoisseurs themselves, they spent the time and not everybody can afford to junk their expensive shoes. These are about $400 new. Not everybody can, can afford to junk their fancy shoes when something like that happens. And people will respect you for putting the time and the effort for doing your gosh darn best to make it look better than before. And if I dare say so myself, I think we did a pretty good job here. We did change the color pretty significantly, pretty drastically, but we did manage to blend that stain so it's not as visible. And now we have a superb looking pair of dark brown, to boot New York Adam Derrick Double Monk Shoes. These are beautiful, they're very comfortable, and this is how you fix and restore shoes that have severe ink stains. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Stay tuned for more, I'll be doing more shoe restorations and profiles in the days to come. Thank you and have a nice one.